Welcome back guys to Voicey here and another r slash entitled parents. Don't forget Voicey veterans to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story was called My Entitled Aunt Shattered My $2000 PC. About one or two years ago when I was moving out of my mum's place, my awesome mum threw me a housewarming party. At her house. Don't know why. She just said I could invite anyone I wanted to and who I didn't want to go, she would deal with. I invited all my friends and about half of my family. I told my mum I specifically didn't want my aunt to be there. It was a blast. I enjoyed all of my friends' company and even my family, who I don't like to socialise with at all, since none of my family and I have the same interests. After the party, I had my friends, or the ones that were left anyways, which was about three or so, come up to my old room and we played on my PC. We played R6, CS, Minecraft, Fortnite even. But at this time it was about 8pm and the party was long over and all my friends have left. So my mum invited my entitled aunt over. I despise her and her crotch goblin. They are the most entitled I've ever seen. My mum calls me downstairs and asked if I could watch my cousins. I have two cousins. One male, one female. I don't mind the younger cousin, who was the male, 11 or 12 at the time, but the older one, 13 at the time, is where the headache starts. The conversation with me and them goes roughly as follows. So, how are you guys doing? I'm fine. Let me play your computer. AC, don't be so rude. Shut up, YC, and play the PC with me. Sorry, but at this point, she's trying to shove me off my chair. I shut off my PC, and this conversation engages. Hey, cut it out. That's enough. She's quite startled as I've never raised my voice near them. But today was a long day, and I wasn't in the mood. Jeez, you could have just said no. He told you no to begin with. Shut up, YC! She is now full bawling at this point. She runs downstairs and I assumed to tell her mum. YC stayed up with me and we joked around a bit about it. I could hear the steam coming from the ears of my EA and I braced myself for impact. She slammed the door into oblivion and began storming me with insults and legal threats. I'll try to keep it as PG as possible, but this is how it went. How freaking dare you speak to my child that way, you... Do you have any idea who we are? Listen, I am not in the mood. I'm not finished. I'm going to press charges on you for child ab I cut her off. No, you're not doing anything. You're going to get the frick out of my room or I'm calling the police. She took this as a challenge. Oh yeah? Go ahead. See how much I give a frick. Me pulling out my phone and dialing 911. You got it. At this point, my mum was at the door, confused as heck. What's going on here? He hit me. I'm livid at this point. Yeah, your son hit my child and even admitted to it. Don't believe them, they're lying. Shut the frick up, YC. No one asked you. At this point, there is yelling everywhere. And in the commotion, I later saw this on my room cam. EC snuck behind all of us and started unplugging my PC. I notice her leaving with it and I start trying to take it back from her. Give me my PC. What do you think you're doing? My aunt noticed me yelling at her and started helping her pull it away from me. Now, as I said before, my door is right in front of the staircase. EA and EC are on the outside of the door, almost off the steps. Then, although you may hear it a lot, my freaking finger slips and I lose the grip on my PC. My aunt and cousin do as well, and it gets thrown down the steps. It was shattered. Also, this all happened in the span of about four minutes. Then, as my PC hit the bottom step, I saw the red and blue lights. I got so relieved. My aunt and cousin tried running, but my savage mum yanked both of them by their hair and locked them in the bathroom. Meanwhile, YC was getting the police officers and telling them about the situation. They come inside looking at my shattered PC and came upstairs to hear EA and EC banging on the door trying to get out. The convo with me and them goes roughly as follows. So what's the problem? Is it them? Pointing at the door. Yep. And that. Pointing at the PC. Was it yours? Yep, and it's now shattered. What was the price for it? $2,000. Police officer's eyes widen and says, Open the door, let me deal with them. He cuffs them on the spot and asks if I wanted to press charges. I gave a solid yes. I also found out the next day they had broken both of my monitors. Well, you can see why he didn't want her at the party, huh? There are sometimes those people who they always happen to behave a particular way. Like every time they're at the party, 
there's always something that upsets them and they ruin everything. You don't even have to recall everything they've done. It's just psychologically built into you as like a warning system. Do not go near this person. Do not invite them to parties. This story was called EP Demands Right of Way, Regardless, from a lot of years back and thankfully my one and only EP encounter. So far, knock on wood. Anyway, I was walking back from the shops in a quiet suburban area when an old guy runs across the road ahead of me, but trips on the curb and goes head first into a garden wall, then smack down onto the pavement. Not moving much, so I run up to him. He's pouring blood from his head, presumably from the garden wall, and his wrist is at a funny angle, presumably from the pavement. I'm straight on the phone to get an ambulance, and then trying to comfort the guy who is in a lot of pain, stem the blood flow, etc so I'm obviously kneeling on the ground. At that point I hear, Excuse me, but I ignore it, being busy. Then it comes again, Excuse me, I need to get past, please move! I look up to find a woman pushing a big old fashioned pram, looking at me expectantly. I just say, I can't get up, you'll have to use the road. EM ain't happy, and nudges me. I told her again I can't move, she will just have to get in the darn road. It wasn't busy, poor old guy was groaning too. Maybe in pain, maybe at her stupidity. Thankfully the ambulances arrive at this point and parks right by us. Now she has to back up and go to the road to get by. So she huffs and walks off. And that was the last I saw of her, as paramedics did their job and took the old guy away. That's all, no threats, no screaming. Just a selfish idiot that cares about no one else. The thing is she had to use the road in the end anyway. Except now there are more witnesses to her stupidity. Yes, we get it, you've got a pram, they're hard to navigate. And usually if you ask someone to move politely to the side, I'm sure they would. But you know what, if something's a medical emergency and they need an ambulance, chances are you moving past them is not a high priority. Is it gonna cause you some inconvenience? Yes, it is. But you know what, next time you're in a situation where you need an ambulance, I'm sure you would want to be the priority too. This story was called, Little Sister Destroys EM and DK at a Fast Food Play Area. So this happened a number of years ago when my daughters were 7-ish and 5-ish. The weather had been super cold and snowy for about a week, and the kids had been cooped up in the house because of it. We had a string of snow days, and this particular day, school was cancelled for super low temps. I was off, and once things warmed up, if you call it that, into double digits, I decided to take the girls to a fast food place for lunch and let them blow off some steam in the big indoor play area the restaurant had. We go, get our food, and get settled. The play area is moderately busy, and fun times commences. Kids are playing well, taking a bite at a time, and having fun. In walks a Karen with a boy who is big for his age. There is a height limit posted and he is about an inch over, but still obviously about the same age as the other kids playing. The EK immediately begins acting out, as EM tries to force him to eat before playing. Eventually his screams break her, and off EK goes. Once in the play gym, he starts with bully type behaviours. Cutting kids off, being bossy, trying to make rules for the other kids. EM just keeps playing on her phone, not noticing or caring. Now, I have always been a let kids work it out parent, as long as it does not get too far. But there were other mums there who took major exception and confronted EM about her child's behaviour. Of course, EM saw nothing wrong with her angel and proclaimed it was not his fault he was a natural leader. This went on for a bit and several mums packed up and left, but my kids wanted to stay. Now EM was not oblivious. She knew what EK was doing, but still did not care. Eventually EK started focusing on my older daughter, who was a little more timid. He was blocking her way to go up the playset to the slide. I gestured to the EM to get her attention and politely point at what is going on. And EM says, my son isn't touching anyone and I don't see a thing he is doing wrong and goes back to her phone. Now big sister is timid, but little sister is hell on wheels. Little sis was able to just run by the EK going to the slide as his focus was on big sis. As she ran to the table to get a bite, we heard big sis start to cry. Did not get hit. She was always a mad crier. Little sis springs into action, sprints up to the playset and pushes EK off the step. EK goes butt over tea kettle down the playset and erupts in screams and wails. He did hit pretty hard. Little sis follows him and gets in his face on the ground and says, Leave my sister alone or I'll beat you up again. EM shrieks. Oh my gosh, baby, what happened? Through his sobs, he says, The little girl pushed me. EM starts to scream at me. I say to her, What did you see? 
She says, I wasn't looking when it happened. I ask little sis what happened and she says, He tripped and fell when he was being mean. I saw the whole thing. I look at EM and say, That's what I saw too. Maybe you should monitor your son better so he doesn't get hurt. Rage. EM starts screaming and threatening. Now EK is up but humbled still crying. EM is now to the nuclear stage and the manager comes in. EM begins making demands for police and phone numbers. Manager tells her she has had several complaints about her son, who was too tall for the playset anyway, being a bully to other kids, and she needed to leave immediately. EM erupts like Krakatoa. Manager escorts her out. Manager, who recognized us from frequent visits anyway, gives my girl some cookies and play resumes. Little sis got a high five from me, and each kid got $5 to not tell mum what happened. But how did the kids explain how they got the $5? Sometimes it's the littlest kids that become the heroes in these situations. They don't really have a sense of scale as much and so they're just like, I don't care that he's bigger than me. He's being a jerk and I'm gonna tell him so. Whereas for all the older kids, their self-preservation kicks in, they're like, well, I don't want to get in trouble so I'm just not gonna say anything. Which is sad because I sometimes feel like that's the world of adults as well. This story was called, Pay My Daughter's Insurance for a Crash That Was Entirely Her Fault. This happened to me and my mother a little while back. Here is the cast for the story. M.M. my mother, me, guess who, N.D. nice daughter, and E.M. Karen. We were driving into the city centre of our city, and we got to a roundabout and stopped. It was at quite a busy time for that roundabout. All of a sudden, we feel a very slight nudge from behind us. A car had rear-ended us. The impact was only at about 15 to 20 miles an hour, so I'm guessing the driver just didn't stop in time. These things happen. Neither me or my mother is hurt and neither is the driver of the other car. She turns out to be a young driver, ND. We found out later that she's 20, so the same age as me. And she's so nervous throughout the ordeal. We assess the damage to my mother's car and to hers. ND has a few scrapes on her front bumper and one of the nails that holds up her number plate has fallen off. Nothing too nasty. My mother's bumper has been dented in and is slightly hanging off the left hand side. Nothing too major, but something that will need to be sent off to the Ford specialist. She's super nervous as she's never been in a crash before. Neither had I. But my mother had been, so she knew what the story was. They exchanged insurance numbers and took a few photos of the damage to our cars. Then set off. Since we weren't at fault, my mother's insurance company would pay for the damages done to her car. The damage done to ND's car wasn't too bad so it wouldn't cost too much to fix, right? When we got home, there's a message on our answering machine. Hello, this is EM. I believe you were involved in a crash with my daughter, ND, earlier. Please call me back when you get this message. We call EM back. I tell my mum to put her on speakerphone, in case she gives us a story for this subreddit. Hello? Hi, this is MM. We were involved in a small road accident with your daughter earlier today. Ah, uh, yes, hello. I have assessed the damage to both your cars and her car, and from the photographs ND took, and we've worked out that you owe us about 1,000 pounds to fix ND's car. Bearing in mind the damage to ND's car was a few scrapes and a number plate out of place, I'd have thought the repair bill wasn't even past 100 pounds. I'm sorry, what? You owe us 1,000 pounds to cover the repair cost for ND's car. Yeah, I'm not paying that. What? I'm not paying that. I'm not at fault. And I highly doubt that it's going to cost a grand to fix a few scrapes and a dislodged number plate. But we have to send it down to a specialist. We have to get a tow truck. My car had far more damage than hers. It's getting sent down to a specialist. And even if I was paying for it, it would cost me around 200 pounds. You mean you're not paying for your repairs? Because I wasn't at fault. So my insurance will. Yes, you were. You stopped somewhere you weren't meant to stop. It was a roundabout at rush hour. Anyway, then give us 200 pounds. Heck no. Fine, see you in small claims court. We never heard from her after that. I'm assuming she tried to get a lawyer, but no lawyer would take her case. And there's no way she'd win. What's the bet that the daughter went home and totally made up some story? Like, yeah, they just randomly stopped and I just ran into them. Just to kind of cover her own butt. That doesn't excuse what the entitled mum did, however. Calling and harassing them about it and then expecting some ridiculous payment as well? She should know better that if you've rear-ended somebody, you're always the one at fault. And maybe just teach your daughter some more responsibility to be more alert and aware while driving on the road. Maybe get the daughter herself to pay for the repairs. Then she'll have to learn the hard way. If the accident had been a lot worse, 
there's a lot more that would have been lost. Post your stories, memes, and fan art at r slash voicey here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one.